Welcome gamers from around the globe. You've dropped into the best place for Game Pass news. That's right. It's the Game Pass Tracker Show. This is episode 145, recorded live Tuesday, March 19th. I'm Nick Metzger here with the best dang co-host a guy could ever have, Mr. Sean Abbott himself, right next to me, all the way across to the UK. Spatial time, it works. It's galactic. We're going to fill your brains with all this week's bits and bobs of Xbox. Like, we're going to chat about Xbox rise to the mid-gen refresh with PS5 Pro rumored for 2024. Also, the OG Xbox creator is up to something with a prototype. What could it be? Sean gives us the lowdown on the late drops and from last weekend's episode when it comes to Minecraft X Marketplace and all the good Game Pass goodies that just dropped. You better sit down. You better buckle up. Because Game Pass Trek will show with one good Crazy ride. It's Jet Set Game Pass Tracker Show. Hello, everybody. How are you? Welcome to this week's show, and welcome to your favorite Xbox podcast, the Game Pass Tracker Show. Uh, you can find us on pretty much every social networking app, and I've put the right tag in for this week. It's at GPT Gaming News. Um, if you have any thoughts, any questions, don't hesitate to shoot us an email. You can do that at show at gamepasstracker.com. And if you are liking what you are hearing, and we'd love to hear it from you, if you can leave us a review on your podcast go-to app of choice, that would be fantastic because it makes us get to more people, which means we can get to do more cool stuff for you people that like to listen to our show. We wouldn't be a Game Pass show if we didn't talk about the big daddy itself, Xbox Game Pass. If you love Game Pass and you love the show and you want to show your support, head to the link in the description and sign up to Game Pass via the Xbox.com website. Um, if you do, you'll not only be supporting us, the Game Pass Tracker show, but you'll also be signing up to the best gaming subscription out there at the moment, which is Xbox Game Pass. So sign up to whatever level you desire, be that PC Game Pass car or Game Pass Ultimate. Just play your own way by using the code in the chat or the show notes, and we'll help you to continue create this awesome content that we love to make for you guys, our amazing fans. And again, for the second week running, I think I might have squashed that quite well. So let's go into the Game Pass headlines. Welcome to the Game Pass headlines. <laughs> What am I trying to do, Sean? I'll tell you what I'm trying to do. I uh, I'm trying to log into my my Twitch so that I can send uh, your fun little messages, and I just can't seem to do it. And I did it. I'm in. Okay, good. All right. Game Pass headlines. Hey, what is coming out? We got a whole brand new load of stuff. Um, starting with Lightyear Frontier, which Sean and I have both put some time into. It's available everywhere, specifically on X and S, though, when it comes to console. Um, Lightyear Frontier, start your interstellar homestead in this peaceful open-world farming adventure. Build your sustainable exo farm, grow alien crops, customize your mech, and explore a new world full of mystery with up to three friends. If you have been listening to this show, you know I've been super excited about it. So I uh, I have some initial thoughts. Haven't made it far enough to make plant any real opinions, but I got some initial thoughts. Uh, also coming out today... I like your pun there. Hey, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, uh, I really meant to do it. Um, uh, also coming out today, MLB The Show 24, out on cloud and console, available day one, also with Game Pass. This is a day one day. That's fantastic. Swing for the fences, experience game, deciding moments, become a legend, and live out your baseball dreams. It's MLB The Show 24. We all pretty much know what it is. Um, and then coming out tomorrow, this is the new drop that just came out today, people. Uh, the Quarry. That's an exciting one that Xbox get Game Pass fans get. Uh, coming to cloud and console tomorrow, March 20th, when the sun goes down on the last night of summer camp. Nine teenage counselors are plunged into an unpredictable night of horror. The only thing worse than the blood-drenched locals and creatures hunting them are the unimaginable choices you must make to help them survive. And then, and then the day after that, March 21st, uh, Thursday, uh, coming to, coming everywhere, Evil West, a dark menace consumes the Old West in solo or co-op, fight with lo with style, 
fight with style in visceral, explosive combat against the bloodthirsty monstrosities. Eradicate the vampiric hordes with your lightning-fueled gauntlet and become a Wild West superhero. Wow, that was a... That was a one, let me tell you. So uh, we have a, we went from a like, hey, you know, you got two games this week to like, boom, we got all kinds of games. Sean, what's coming out next week, sir? So coming out next week, March 26th is your first date for the first game drop next week. And that is Terra Invicta, which is coming to PC only in game preview. Uh, from the creators of Long War, an alien invasion has fractured humanity into seven idolic Fraction, idealic fractions, each with a unique vision for the future. Lead your chosen fraction to take control of Earth's nations, expand across the solar system, and battle enemy fleets in tactical combat. Uh, I'd just like to make sure, like, just so you definitely understand, this is for PC only. Looking at it, it is very much built for PC. So uh, uh, we might see, as we have done with other games yeah. previous, we might see a console version come out at some point but for now it's just pc and then this is now moved into coming next week which wow. you know is exciting nick's doing a dance uh, march 28th coming to console on pc is diablo 4 the next gen action rpg experience is coming to game pass with endless evil to slaughter countless abilities to master and nightmare marriage dungeons and legendary loot experience a gripping story or jump straight into the season of the construct to unearth a new threat looming deep underneath the sands of Kaistan. so yep that's coming next week like i said it's just moved from the and like coming later in the month it's now coming next week people so you know code red get excited it's coming soon uh the next game that's coming out is hot wheels unleashed to turbocharge which is coming everywhere so it's cloud console and pc that's coming out march 28th uh, get behind the wheel of the coolest cars and the vehicles from the Hot Wheels universe, including the new ATVs and motorcycles. Explore five new stunning environments and race the way you want with new mechanics and exciting challenges and crazy game modes. Um, if you played the original Hot Wheels Unleashed, you'll be a big fan of this as well. It looks like it's going to be good fun. Um, nice, easy arcade style at, um, gameplay as well, which is nice with the addition of new... Um, vehicles atvs and motorcycles and then march 28th we get another day one uh, game drop with game pass uh, called open roads and it's coming everywhere so a long lost family secrets hints of a hidden fortune and miles to go before they sleep tess divine's relationship with her mom has never been easy but they are about to get set out together on a journey into the past that they will never forget sweet Got a jam-packed two weeks. Well, this week and next week, that's for sure. Coming soon, like literally the month, the week after that, our April Fool's game is uh, Ark Survival Ascended. Available everywhere on the console, only Xbox Series X and S. Feel like we're saying that a little bit more as we move into this generation. Um, F123, Cloud on EA Play, April 2nd, and Super, Mi Super Hot Mind Control Delete. So we got some games coming out real soon, too, out of this uh, drop of games, which is pretty cool. Um, yep. And then there was all those so games. Just, Go just, ahead. I'm going to say, just to reiterate to everyone, so new Game Pass games that are coming, um, the announcements-wise, is The Quarry, Evil West, Terror Invictor, Hot Wheels, Unleashed 2, and Open Roads. All those we didn't know about from Directs or anything like that, they have kind of just appeared out of nowhere. For sure. What's leaving, Sean? So, things that are leaving, uh, Hot Wheels Unleashed, the Game of the Year edition, so the original one is obviously leaving to make room for the new one coming. So, the new one comes on March 28th, the old one disappears on March 31st. Um, Infinite Guitar, that's going to be disappearing as well from everywhere, and then MLB The Show 23, is also disappearing because, you know, we've got MLB 24. So why do we need 23 anymore? And all those games leave March 31st. That's right. If you're interested, you better buy them and you can get them for a 20% discount with Game Pass or beat them, as Sean said, March 31st. So, Sean, are you excited for the new drop of games? What do you think, man? Um, Yes, I've enjoyed what I've played of Lightyear Frontier so far. Um, we'll talk about it in the dashboard. 
Uh, the quarry, I know Jay will probably like that. It's very um, Jason Voorhees style, um, mm. stuff like that. It's a, mm. um, an interactive horror drama. So, you know, I think it's one of those where it's kind of like a movie. You can kind of sit through it and watch. You're making this really difficult, though. He's laid it all over me. Um, and then Evil West sounds interesting. Wild Wild West versus, you know, vampires and mm-hmm. stuff. So. Yeah, I I think it I think it's a cool drop of games. I don't know if there's anything really here. There's not a lot here for me. I'll probably give Open Roads a try. Oh, and Diablo Four. I mean, I, I forget that that's now in the in the drop. Um, so Diablo Four is a game that I've been excited to try. Not really sure if it's for me. I've held off on buying it. I know it's kind of shameful, but I did uh, because I kind of figured with the whole thing it'd be coming this way. So I'm excited to give that a go. Never played a Diablo game before, so uh, so I'll be jumping into that and seeing uh, seeing what I think. Um, Open Roads, I'll probably give that a go. Uh, excited to kind of see what that's about. See maybe if I can play that with my wife. Uh, I played what was the one that that you could play together. Um, ah, darn it. It was, it was when we were in like a first party drought. It was one of the games that came out. It's not coming to me. As Dusk Falls. Yes. You're so good. Right there. Right when I need you, Sean. Um, yeah. So I played As Dusk Falls with my wife. Might see if, uh, we can play Open Roads together as well. Um. Yep. Um, yeah. I'd, I'd say give Hot Wheels Unleashed 2 a try with Noah. I think I, he might be interested in that. He likes a little bit game, uh, a That's bit a of point. Mario Kart. So That's a good point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a local co-op, I take it? I mean, it'd be shameful if it wasn't. Yep. Okay. Yeah, split, it will be split screen. Okay. So. All right. Yeah, that's cool. Um, and then the the return of Super Hot Mind Control Delete has got me quite excited because I really like that game you on the did. VR. Um, oh, And I really VR, enjoyed it on the, the console. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I think I first played it on the console, and then when I got the, the, the VR headset, I got it on there too, which was even more fun, so... You'd be like in a full flop yeah. sweat when you get done with that. I mean, you'd just be like, you'd be, you'd be like taking. Oh, back. I am. Yeah, <laughs> it's crazy. It, the, yeah, I. It is one of the only games where I have to make sure there is nothing in the living room. So I take the coffee table out of the living room and stuff like that, and make sure I've got like the the pass through guardian up, so I don't end up punching the TV because you end up crouching behind stuff. You're like picking things up. You're turning around to throw things, and it's kind of like it, yeah, it gets gets. Uh, it's warm. Mm-hmm, I bet. So, does this make you excited to play it on like the console, or does it just make you remember the VR and be like, "Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna boot up the VR and play that"? Um, I'll, I'll try it on the console again. I want to see because I, I enjoyed it on the console in terms of like it was more strategic on the console because you move a lot when you are in the headset. Whenever you move, even if it's like a fraction of a movement, it would like it speed the game up. So we're in the console, you can kind of just let go of the controls and everything would just pause. So I'll try it gotcha. and see if they brought anything different to it because there's quite a lot of different modes in the VR. So I wonder if they brought any of those modes across back to the console. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, I th- so I'll be excited to try those. Um, anything else before we go on to the X-Speed? Uh, nope, nothing else at all. All right, on to the X-Speed we go. Next week's where we talk about our top stories, and we have three top stories this week. Uh, the first one with PS5 Pro now rumored for 2024. Where does that leave little old Xbox? Um, I still don't think we're going to get a mid-gen refresh for the Xbox. Um, I I don't think it's something they're excited about. I think. What was the the podcast called where they sat down together? Wasn't the partner preview or something else? Yeah, no, it's the Xbox uh, podcast uh, show. I don't know Xbox podcast Xbox show. I don't know <laughs> yeah, whatever whatever their official podcast is. That thing where they all sat down, all the big yeah, wigs. Phil Phil Sarah and Matt sat there and they they kind of didn't give any inklings to the fact that they were going to be bringing some form of mid gen thing in. So I can't see it. 
Yeah, to be honest, I I don't remember entirely what Phil has said about... He has made some offhanded comments about hardware in 2024, and I don't remember what they are. Um, so, but I... It, those aside of whatever he may have said that I don't remember, <laughs> um, I don't think... If we get anything, we'll get the digital thing. That's what I think. We'll get the digital X. If, yeah. If that, and it's not going mean, to be anything big. It's just going to be... Hopefully, it's going to be something small. <laughs> um, hopefully, it's going to be something so small. It's going to be the digital just, version of it. Yeah. Just to cover what the uh, rumored specs are for this PS5 Pro is uh, 28% increase to the system memory, a special super resolution upscaling solution, and a GPU that apparently renders 45 times faster than standard consoles, complete with a 33.3 teraflops of graphical power. Um, and the CPU is said to be the same, but it adds a high CPU frequency mode. Um, I mean, it's, it seems a lot. I mean, it also says here something along the lines of um, they're making minor improvements to the heatsink. So obviously, you your PS5 now that it's handling all that graphical power extra isn't going to set fire and cook. Hmm. So, yeah, I would uh, hope that's the case. It just uh, sounds like it's going to melt your face off, and that's you know that's good for all the graphical people who want their face melted off. I'm very happy for them. I hope they get that. Yeah, and hopefully, I mean, it I... gets quicker. I don't know. I don't know. We're at a point now where it's like I don't know. What are we even talking about anymore? Like I, I don't know. What are we going to do with this yeah. thing? The, I don't know, the Xbox are making so many waves to try and get so many different games on different platforms. And then we've got games like The Quarry coming that was a, it was released across all the consoles but sat on PlayStation Plus for a while, um, you know, as a release of day one. We've got that coming to Xbox. Um, Hi-Fi Rush is on its way to PlayStation from Xbox. Like, there must come a point where the two developers kind of, like, when it comes to hardware, kind of sit down together and go, should we just make one box? Just make one really freaking good box. That never. Everybody can play all the games on. Could I know. I know it's never going to yeah. happen, but that would be the best. Idea. Could you imagine? I mean, to be honest, it makes some business sense. Some business sense. Because right, they could split the they could split the development cost. They could split the profit. There would be more profit because you're not competing to buy this to make the same box. I mean, there's some business sense in it. You could you could sell your own software exclusively on the box. I mean, I say exclusively, it would be on one box, but it would be your software, and you'd get a hundred percent of your software sales. Right? I mean, make. Yep. makes sense in a lot of ways you ha your install base would be shit times bigger i mean be huge uh so i mean i don't i actually don't entirely disagree that that wouldn't be a horrible thing it also puts everything and i think everything already is on the game but it puts everything on your games right it's one box you're fighting over people to buy your thing on that one box and i think that scares to be frank, both of them a little bit. Both of them, I don't think e yeah. either one of them really wants to have all their stuff on the same available in the same box because then it lays bare who's who's the most popular software developer, right? And publisher. It's like then it's just it's that easy. It's like it's not like well, I'd have bought you know I'd have bought Ragnarok, God of War if it was on if it was on Xbox, but it's not, so I'm not going to buy a PS5. There's always that argument. Man, that that would that would be something, Sean. Never gonna happen, but that'd be something. Yeah, but then this is what this is the, the other side of this is you've got Xbox and PlayStation that sit there side by side playing game. Like you can buy the same game on the Xbox and you can buy the same game on the PlayStation. People claim that the PlayStation can render it faster than the Xbox, and people on the Xbox, like myself, will say, "Well, yeah, you might be able to do that, but the service is so much better." With blah 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 mm -hmm. blah blah. And then you've got Nintendo that kind of sit there and go, "Ah." We make games that are nowhere near as, you know, powerful as what you guys make, but we're still making an absolute killing. In fact, we're still selling more mm. than Xboxes in Europe. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, I just, it, it comes a point where 
I'm sat there sometimes and I think, wow, maybe I should just invest in a in a decent PC to sit behind the TV and run PC Game Pass for the games that I do play that are always on everywhere, cloud console and PC. Um and buy a rather large gaming monitor. Would would I not benefit more from that than waiting for the next console to come out and buy the next console? I don't know. It's not gonna happen. You aren't gonna see me suddenly switch to a PC because it's just an expensive thing to keep up on, yeah. but that's that the, the PC is the one box where you can play most games because most games that you can play on a PlayStation are on Steam. Most games that you can play on an Xbox are on Steam, so they're all there available to play. Yeah, and I mean, because the hardware's are, there, they usually yeah. look better. Yeah, most are. It's a, it's an interesting concept. I. I have always thought that PC gaming was much more expensive. I don't entirely know if that's true. Like, somebody might be listening to this and be like, "Uh, no, that's definitely not. But it always seems like a much more expensive way to go when it comes to gaming. And also, you got to get all the pieces and parts to work just right. And if something breaks, and it's just like, oh, there's so much. It just just seems like so much work. The only thing I will say is the... The graphics processor that my dad's currently got, I think he's got the 4090, the RTX 4090, I think it is, graphics processor in his rig for the driving simulator stuff. Mm -hmm. That was a £1,200 graphics card. Holy fudge, that's just the graphics card, Sean. Yeah, exactly. So so when you say PC gaming, you don't know if it is is or isn't expensive. PC gaming is freaking really expensive because... You you need to rather than just buying the next console because that is the next thing that you need to buy to play the next generation of games. The next generations and games on PC require you to have a better graphics card. But when because you've got a better graphics card, you might need a better power supply because your power supply might not be enough or might overheat because of the graphic the demand on the graphics card. So you you have to swap and change all the time. So there's a lot to more to think about with it, but. Once you've got it set up right and it's running, they are pretty awesome. I mean, when I sit and play, um, when I go around to my dad's and I'm having to go on the the driving simulator and I've got the headset on, it is like flawless. So, yeah, you know, I mean, we, but when, and to go back to your original like topic of like a, a console gaming, a gaming console that both make. Not only would it never happen, but also not only do I think it would never happen, but also I don't I don't particularly think Xbox is going to have a console around for very long, to be quite honest. I mean, I just they might go one more generation. I know you have said you want them to go out with a bang with some like uh, face melting thing. A lot of numbers and (laughs) all that jazz and things that I don't understand. Teraflops and such. Um, But I just don't. I I don't know. I think Xbox is eyeing the next generation as a generation that doesn't have a that doesn't have a box. To be honest, that's my my personal opinion. And I I don't know I don't know that it's going to be that way. But I could see them trying, or I could see them giving. Well, I mean, I guess they kind of give an option for that now. But I could see them pushing that option much more than they do in this generation, um, which you know could be some could be somewhat unfortunate. I tried to play the uh, uh, X Cloud not too long ago, and I I had to wait for like six minutes to get into the to the little stream thing. And once I got in, it worked great, and it was no problem. But you know, I yeah, I did I did have to watch the rocket penis go for like six minutes before I could actually get in. And uh, you know, that's unfortunate. But uh, beyond that, you know, it could be the way to go. Yep. So. There you go. I think we found our feature story, Sean. We just did our feature story early. We didn't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe we we talked quite in depth for that one for it just for it being even for it being a top news story. But there was a lot to say about it. I mean, we we've touched on it several times about mid gen refreshes. Are they yeah. worth it? Are they going to do it? And so on and so forth. So yeah, mid gen refreshes and. Um handhelds i feel like we have beat the shit out of those horses i mean and then we bury them and we drag them up from the dead and beat the crap out of them some more those are the two topics uh when something actually comes out it'll be it'll be just amazing 
absolutely amazing. Yep. All right, story number two. Xbox's OG creator, Mr. Seamus Blackley himself, appears to be up to something with the proto with a prototype model. This thing looks cool, Sean. What is this? Yeah, thing? so it, I I think, and this is going back many, many moons ago, I think that was a prototype for the original Xbox. I think to make it look like an X. Um and then he shared a picture of of like the casing fabric like in the fabrication process. Um and that apparently was the process the, the prototype for the prototype. But if he's digging around pulling old stuff out, is like is he working on something else? Is he like, you know, is he doing something else in the background? Is he potentially working on a new style box for a, a cloud only kind of stuff? I don't know. There's lots of stuff with with all the craziness about mid gen refreshes. Is like there was just it was just nice to to, to go in there. It's also a nice nod to see this for for uh, sure. How much kick ass? How much money designer. do you think Xbox would make if they sold a slightly scaled down version of this with like? 30 OG Xbox games, basically like a mini NES. <laughs> they would make so much money. Not not that they really need any more money, but I mean, can you can, can but they're a business, so that is why they exist. Can you imagine how much money they would make if this is the thing? Yeah. I mean, I'm I still wholeheartedly believe that the Nintendo made the the mini NES and the mini SNES um as a test bed to see if people were interested in playing old games before they built the NSO um, kind of thing and brought all those old games to the Switch and parted them as an emulator. I think that's why I think those two consoles were a test bed for it because they made a lot of money out of them. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, even if they're games that they could play in a million other places, just to have something that sweet, on the uh the rec the ladies and gentlemen it's the rex cam rex is in rex is in the camera <laughs> sean's uh and i don't know if we've uh i don't know if we've filled in the v the viewers listeners that rex is now your doogie right he's he's your pup he is he's officially ours he's now in his new home has been for a few weeks now settled in sweet how's the uh instagram page going have we got that yet have we got the rex rexagram <laughs> Lindsay has made an Instagram page and a TikTok page. When so. the TikTok? <laughs> oh, Lord. He's probably got more followers than I got already. I'll tell you that much. Good on him. Man, he's going to be making he's gonna be making you guys bank. Just post those pictures. They're pretty good. Anyway, sorry. I think people would love this, uh, uh, a prototype of this of this gig here. Or not a prototype, but like a, like a OG X Mini in that shape and form. And that would sell yep. a crap. For definite. Ladies and gentlemen, this I mean, is all you have to do is go ahead. Sorry, my bad. You just have to stick it like hundred hundred dollars, easy. Yeah, and it sell pay that. pretty yeah. quick. I think you're right. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, this is where Sean takes over because I have no earthly idea. He has notes upon notes here. This is story number three: Minecraft Marketplace Pass Info. Sean, I will sit at your feet uh, as you make me <laughs> as you spill your wisdom. So, back end of last week, we were saying pie chat, and this kind of dropped. Um, I think you you probably, if you were listening to the audio or you watched this live, um, I paused for a little bit as I was trying to read information. I then went on a massive hunt to see if I could like very quickly find information to tell everybody while we we're in there, but I couldn't find a right lot. I don't think there was a right lot at the time. Um, so, I've done some digging, and the Minecraft Cross Marketplace... Uh, pass is a subscription service that you can get with Mojang now. Um, it's free ninety nine a month, uh, which gives you access to one hundred and fifty plus different pieces of content from the Minecraft marketplace. So that is stuff that you can purchase on the Minecraft marketplace. A bit like Game Pass. The, the, there is certain games you can buy on Xbox that are on Game Pass if you wanted to buy them, um, but Game Pass. You, your monthly Game Pass subscription gives you access to those games for free. 
this kind of deal happens within just Minecraft itself. So be it a texture pack, be it skins, be it biomes and stuff like that, be it the some of the mini games and stuff like that they set up in different worlds. All that is available to you for for three nine nine a month. Um, it's only selected stuff that's there, but it's available. If you have a Realms Plus subscription, which you can buy through Mojang, um, the Marketplace Pass is automatically included in that. But if you um, sign up to the Marketplace Pass and you, you enjoy it, and when I say you enjoy it, I'm, I'm kind of aiming for those that are really big interested in Minecraft or for parents with kids. Um, but they're you know they you think they're making the most out of it and stuff like that and you want to then get them the realms pass, cancel the marketplace pass first, then purchase the realms pass because um, some people are having issues with them passing over and they've been charged twice. And then anything so so your kiddos have got the the expansions pass. Um, you know they've been building the worlds, they're super excited and stuff like that, um, and one of the mashups and one of the skins or one of the worlds leaves the marketplace pass. Um, you don't, they won't lose that world and they won't lose all the stuff that they've done in that, but it will just become unavailable to them um, unless they go in and actually purchase it from the marketplace. So you'll then have to make an additional purchase a bit again, like game pass games. Um, you can download them. You can have them on your dashboard. You can play them. Um, but once they have left the service, you either need to buy them for your twenty percent off before they leave, or buy them at full price once you you know you're outside of that scope. This kind of works the same. Um, so there's that. And if you purchase something from the marketplace pass, um, you can access it from any device or any compatible version of Minecraft Bedrock Edition or the Minecraft Marketplace, which is sold separately. Um, as long as you're signed into your Minecraft account. So if you're playing on an iPad, a Switch. Um, PC, console, mobile phone, anything like that, they can have full access to all of that stuff at all times. Whew. That's a I think lot. that's everything. <laughs> it is. It's a lot. It's a great little service. The more I've read about it, the more I'm kind of thinking um, if Logan really gets into playing Minecraft a little bit more, it could be something that I do because I know he's dying for certain skins and certain stuff like that. So. Yeah. I do know that the kids love these skins and the fancy realms. My daughter loves the farming realm and my son is driving a car somehow in Minecraft. I, you know, I'm like Cranky Kong on the porch. Like, what are you kids doing with your stupid? That's not Minecraft. But, you know, if they love it and Lord knows Mojang, Minecraft they going to make bank off of this thing. I mean, they're going to make so much cash. I mean, it's four bucks. If your kid comes to you and you're like, listen, I want these things, blah, 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 blah. And be like, how much are they? And they're like, what, 20, 30? No, it's just $4 a month. Be like, all right, fine, whatever. Have it. Go right. go wild. Uh, they, they were smart in their pricing. Yeah, for it's, priced, sure. it's priced perfectly. So it it gets people gives people enough to feel like they're getting off from the game, but not enough, not too much that it feels like you, you you're you robbing Mojang blind for all the stuff in the world, but enough to get the taste. And they will probably chop and change what's included in the 150 plus pieces quite often. So they'll they'll draw you in with a set of texture packs that you really like. They'll stop you from being able to use them. So then you'll think. Bleh. I'll just purchase them because I really like using them, mm -hmm. and they make more money. So they've they've really they've got a really good business model. That's all I can say. Yep, makes sense. Good. Um, the only thing research. I will say is good research, Sean. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. The other thing is none of this is supported on Amazon Kindle. So if you are playing via an Amazon Kindle with Minecraft, which I didn't even think was possible, um, it's not supported on there. Or oh, the Java edition of Minecraft is not supported. Gotcha. Okay. All right. There you go. There's your top stories for this week, folks. We appreciate you. Uh, we got four news bulletins that we're going to, you know, go through fairly quick here. Xbox hires the former YouTube and Facebook exec as a new VP of Global Partnership. This uh, Facebook exec is named 
a name that Lee Labe. What is it? Lee Leo Labe. Ah, there you go. That person. They hired that person to be the VP of Global Partnerships. Uh, second news bulletin, special sale for Game Pass members. The only one I'm going to mention here, uh, 90% off on Hellblade. I know Hellblade 2 is coming out. I know you play Hellblade on Game Pass, but whatever. It's a pretty good deal. You might want to think about it. Two major third-party accessory makers are merging in another gaming acquisition. Not often do you hear of gaming accessories uh, makers merging. This, I mean, it's the same but different, right? Uh, that's that's interesting. Well, the turtle is it Turtle Beach? Yeah, so it's Turtle Beach and PDP. That's a huge um, merger. Both. It is a big merger because Turtle Beach are really good headset and control makers, and PDP have currently been working on the Rift Master, which like anybody that's playing Fortnite Festival stage or has played Guitar Hero 4 or anything like that, or Rock Band 4 in the past, is massively excited about the Rift Master guitar that they're bringing out at some point. So this is a really big merger, and hopefully it'll finish off the, con the, the guitar controller because I'm waiting for that to come out, um, and that'll come out soon. So are, is everybody named Turtle... Is it going to be named Turtle Beach? Yeah, um, to pick I, up well, PDP. It's already... Yeah. Yeah, so Turtle Beach will just carry on as Turtle Beach, but PDP will be absorbed in. Mm -hmm. There you go. Hmm. That's that's interesting. I hope uh, I hope it helps them out. I hope they can make cool. I hope we uh, still get cool PDP controllers. I have. I mean, I don't mind Turtle Beach head head headsets. I think they're I think they're good. Uh, they're they're not my favorite. I'm a I'm a Steel Series guy, uh, but. Uh, so I, my worry is that we, that we still get good PDP controllers. Cause I do like, I think they come out with some ingenious designs and, uh, hopefully we continue to get those. Yeah. I mean, I had the X 42s, which was the wireless, um, uh, Dolby 5.1 headsets by Total Turtle Beach. And they lasted me nine years before I had to get the X 50. Astro A fifties, and now I've had the Astro A fifties for six years. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, so that's cool. Uh, the final news bulletin: Xbox latest console giveaway comes with an entire Fallout themed vault. Yep. This, so you're going to get an Xbox Series X with the Fallout wrap on it the xbox series x controller which you can purchase for on the design labs with the fallout wrap on it all comes in a giant fallout fort Knox style vault with a you know and stuff like it looks awesome i want it i want it so bad yeah this vault's amazing i could see them selling this at some point down the road i would yeah. buy this for some stupid reason, I I don't want the <laughs> what what I could see them selling. Hold on, hold on. Is not the like switch, not the switch, not the uh, console and the and the controller. Just sell me the vault so that I can put random stuff in there. I would. I think it looks awesome. <laughs> yeah, it, it does. It looks beaten up as well, which mm -hmm. is what I like. It looks like it has survived Fallout. Yep. So. Yep. Fantastic. Very good. So the competition ends April 14th. Uh, the show starts April 11th, which I'm super excited for. Um, you've got to be 18 plus for it. It's US only, so I can't enter this competition. Otherwise, I already ordered them. But all you have to do is go to the Xbox uh, Twitter page, follow, retweet with hashtag Fallout Xbox sweepstakes um, for a chance to win. So. Do it. All right, that's our news bulletins. We kind of did a mini feature story for you in the beginning of the X feed. So that means we are on to our dashboard. Ladies and gentlemen, it's our dashboard where we talk about the games we've been playing and games we hope to be playing on our docket. Sean, what have you been playing? Uh, so I won't bore many people with the Fortnite saga. Uh, that is still ongoing. Um, still very much enjoying the the Ancient Gods kind of stuff. Uh, there's currently 
I'm currently up to date with the main story stuff with it, but they have just launched all the Midas stuff. So they have now have a, a the floor is lava. Midas in uh, was it Midas presents the floor is lava. So rather than a storm cloud that comes in, um, they have lava that raises up from the floor and that kind of to eliminate players. Um, I gave that a go and wasn't overly thrilled with it. I, I kind of just wanted to go back to the normal game mode. So, but I need to go back and try it because there's challenges that you can unlock, which helps you know boost your XP and stuff. So, so there's that. Um, after finally remembering that Forza Motorsport have added the Norschlaf uh, or Green Hell, as people have now started referring it to. Um, I did a couple of laps of that today, which was fun. Um, I quite like that they've added. So when you go in and you select, if you like, like me, I sometimes just go in and do a quick race and say it on myself. Um, if you select the Nurburgring, you can now have the GP circuit, the Norschlaffer, which is just the um, the huge 13 mile circuit or you can have them combined so you like you'll do the gp circuit branch off from the gp circuit do the nodge laugh and then go back through the gp circuit uh which is good fun because it's like two different driving experiences in one so hmm. um and then before we start recording this evening because i kind of had enough of having my ass handed to me on fortnite uh, i tried to go into the normal fortnite mode so building and everything um in ranked and I was doing okay. I kept I came second a couple of times. Um, I thought, you know, what, I'll try Light Lightyear Frontier because I said I would. I said I'd, I'd try it so we could talk about it. Um, mm -hmm. So I went and tried that for a bit. So what did you? Uh, what did you? What, what, well, okay. Well, first off, let me let me kind of set the scene. <clears throat> we'll just kind of talk about this together because really, it's the only game that anybody cares about that I've been playing. <clears throat> Um, so it's the, uh, brand new day and date, uh, you're on a, you go to a, a separate planet and you have a mech and you have to pick up your stuff and then all of a sudden you're using it to kind of make this world and all you can do with this is, uh, hmm, all you can do with it is, uh, grab, whoops, sorry, uh, all you can do with it is plant stuff and craft stuff to kind of build out your settlement, your village and grow this thing grow the settlement on your planet sorry uh so yeah so that's the idea what 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 was your what was your initial reactions i'll put it that way your thoughts initial thoughts um i think it's very well made i think it's very colorful um it's it's funny because um <laughs> and like we well, we talked about before i started the podcast um <clears throat> I tried the to see how good the mech is at platforming. Mm -hmm. So I was kind of like just trying to see how high you could jump, how far you could jump far, like how much you can get around in this open world at, like atmosphere to just to see where you could take it to, what obviously what new stuff is up. Like if it, rather than walking around the hill and finding an easy way up, I was like, I just want to get to the top of this hill because I want to see what's up there. I want to see what resources are there. Um, because you you get the tutorial is basically to build like you said build a settlement, um, mm -hmm. and then it tells you to restore certain areas and stuff like that. And how you restore those areas is different every time. So I went around, found all the parts uh, that I needed to find, um, built all the stuff that I needed to build, and then I went off exploring. Um, and the mech is really fun because it is really cumbersome, mm -hmm. like you'd expect a giant robot yeah. to be. So yeah. like if you if you don't land with both your feet on the same thing and it's kind of off off tilted to one side, it'll just start to fall and roll and drop. And the only way you can stop it is by it hitting the ground and not being able to roll anywhere. So you do that and you kind of you've got to get out, you've got to flip the mech back up and then get back in and carry. And I thought that was hilarious. I liked the the way it fell. I liked the way it fell. I liked that there was no control once it went because you know it's a giant mechanical right. piece of metal. So once it goes, it goes. <laughs> so yeah, um, I think the 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 harvesting is nice and simple. I like the fact that you've got to combine certain tools, so you need to use the vacuum to suck up the water to then use the water gun 
if that runs out of water, you've got to go back to a body of water to suck that up. And that's something you can upgrade. You can increase the capacity of the water tank and stuff like that. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, uh, so being a farming crafty sim guy, uh, I have been having good fun with it. I do. I am very interested. I very shocked. I should say that I really enjoy the first person view of in the cockpit. Uh, when I'm when I'm walking with it, I really when I saw that game, I thought nah, I'm never playing in that. That seems cumbersome and ridiculous. Uh, so I really thought I would be over the uh, third third person view. But actually, I for the most part really enjoy the first person view more than more than third person. I do appreciate how it feels to be in it. You kind of get that. You know, it, it it's kind of got that stiff, rigid feel like you would expect a mech to have. I think it controls well like that. I will say they're trying to give you the feeling by have the like the rumble of the mech the whole time, and after a while, they're like, it's like okay, like I get it, and I've had enough of it. Like I just I don't want to hear the rumble in the background the whole time I'm in the mech. But other than that, I think it follows pretty much your normal crafting scheme. I'm not going to, it right now isn't breaking ground other than I guess you're in a mech. Uh, so I guess there's that in that way. It kind of is breaking ground. But, uh, but the, in the crafting and farming sphere, sh you know, shtick is kind of what you would expect. You're, you're using your, you're using these tools that the mech has to plant. It is kind of fun because you have these big gigantic tools like a saw. Normally, when you got a saw on a mech, you're like thinking you're gonna go go out and like crush and kill something, right? And all you're doing here is just chopping down trees or using the I don't know the jackhammer thing to crush rocks. So that's that's interesting, uh, and and kind of a, a quirky thing about it. But other than that, I have enjoyed my time with it so far. My the best thing I can say is game previews can be rocky. We all know that. Um, Coral Island came back from a lot of bugs and is doing much better now. But the, I, I had no crashes in my two hours of playing. There were it was it was pretty smooth going. My only com my only like observation would be that uh, the UI seems to be made for PC. So, so so it was difficult for me. Some not difficult, but it took some extra work to be like where it, where you would expect a a button like letter like you know x b a y it would be like a keyboard stroke letter instead and so you kind of got to guess and figure it out but you can do that and i'm sure that's now, very updatable i didn't have any of that really really everything was all x y r t r b Wow! Yeah, I to I'll have to go back in and check it because uh, you just started playing, right? Yeah, literally. Like, I mean, what you played it because you told me you were playing it, and you like we discussed it. So I'd maybe say there was four hours between us playing it. So whether or not they pushed a patch, realizing that it dropped with the PC. UI, yeah, and it was I, just a really quick patch. Yeah, I, because I mean, you would imagine it would be right. I mean, it's not like it's that big of a change. Mm. That's what I figured they would do. Um, yeah, I'll go back in and check because I literally played it like pretty much as as fast as it dropped, and I had it pre-installed too. So, um, so yeah, did you pre-install it? I didn't pre-install it. Okay, I can't understand why. But it's two gigabytes. It's two point two yeah. gigs, so it didn't take long to. That's install. a that's a great point Small too, game. Sean. Yeah, I was very shocked. I was I was ready for this like 20, 30 gig game, and yeah, just two two quick gigs. Uh, so I don't I don't you know I wouldn't judge I wouldn't judge it by by that, but I did find that very surprising. Um, there's, refreshing. There's, like, the there's a lot. Yeah, there there is a lot in terms of. Um, if you want extra resources, make sure you're feeding all the animals because they help you get resources. There's no fall damage. I haven't taken any form of damage. There isn't even a health bar that I can yeah. see, which is pretty cool, um, which I like. I like about it. Mm -hmm. there's, there's no fret. Yep. So if the, with no fret means you've, you're just free to kind of miranda around and, and do as you please. Yeah, you're 100% right, Sean. There, I do not think there's any dying in this game. The worst thing you have to worry about is that you don't water your plants. And I think your plants yeah. will die. So don't don't kill your plants. 
Well, I, I think what all I figured so far is if you don't water your seeds every day, they don't grow into the plant. They kind of just stay at the. Oh, that is that stage. what they do? They go stagnant. So, yeah. Okay. Dormant yeah. might be the better word. So. Um. Anyways. So yeah, that, for my for uh, I will play some more of it this week, and and I'm sure talk more about it next week. Um. But yeah. Uh. Any other games for you? That you're playing? Um. Not that I'm playing. I've got Retro Bowl downloaded on my phone, but I haven't kind of... <laughs> Tonight was supposed to be the night. I was supposed to take Logan to gymnastics, but it got cancelled because um, we've had a lot of water pipe issues in the area just recently, oh. and they had no water, so they, they cancelled. Gotcha. Um, so, and, so that was like I was going to have an hour to outside gymnastics to play Retro Bowl. I had it set ready. I was like, that's what I'm going to do. I ain't going to take anybody else with me in the car because I don't want to sit and have a conversation. I just literally want to try this game. And I haven't been able to do that. So. Can I tell you, I had a really kind of kind of almost special moment. So um, my my son was supposed to go to basketball practice. Uh, well, he did go to basketball practice, but my daughter was sick. And so she like she was super tired. She fell asleep right after school. And uh, my, my mom took my son. So it was just me and her. And she woke up like 5 30 and my son doesn't get home from basketball practice now until six and i was playing retro bowl which is just this silly phone game you can't play on the switch you can't play it on the xbox only it's only as i as i believe it's only mobile and switch at the moment and you're it's this pixelated thing you only play the offense you don't play the defense you get to pick like very few people on the team blah 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 and so she was like and so she woke up and saw me playing it and she's like, Dad, are you playing that retro that retro football thing? And I was like, Yeah. And she was like, Can you she was like, I, I watch football, but dad, I don't understand any of it. Can you teach me? And so yeah, we would we like went through as I was playing the game, I was like, Okay, see the yellow the yellow line you always see on TV? I was like, You gotta get to that in four tries. And so we just like we went through like all this stuff of like what a touchback is first and down first 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 and 10 first and goal like all that stuff but like you get seven points three points extra point you can go for two point like she's just like she was like soaking it all in it was a good time she she learned she got a crash course in american football so it was fun <laughs> um i am what i believe in the last world of mario v donkey kong i won't say anything more than that on that that game is a lot a lot of fun to play. I don't think it would be much fun to play by myself, but it is fun. I'm playing with my mom and the kids right now, so in that that way, it is fun. To, we, it's just two player, so we're passing the controllers back and forth, um, and we don't move on until we until we until we star the level. So we're having a good time. Uh, games on my docket for the coming week. Uh, probably Diablo 4. That's going to be the thing I play next. Yeah, Diablo 4 and Open Roads, but I won't get to Open Roads before we chat. I probably don't. I hope I can get to Diablo. Um, I wished, I wish that Lightyear Frontier came out earlier than it did. It didn't come out till 1 p.m. here in, uh, <laughs> in, in the States. Uh, so I hope Diablo drops in the morning and so I can uh, see if I can clear my calendar. Oh, the kids are home. Crap. Dang, kids. Uh, spring break, <laughs> man. Spring break. Well, yep. I'll have to try that's, to that's what to That's me. it for me. I think Logan finishes Thursday. Emily and Chair finish Friday. So does Lindsay. Um, then I go on a bad week next week. So the first week of the, the two-week break for them, I am not here. I pretty much have work every day. Uh, and then the second week, we've got a lot of stuff planned. So um, I can't see me playing a right lot of anything yeah. for the next week yeah. in a bit. I get you. Yeah, so uh, we'll just have to see what we can get. But all three of those March 28th games are interesting to me. Like, probably, I'm not going to jump in on the Quarry or Evil West, Terra and Victa's PC only, but Diablo 4, Hot Wheels Unleashed 2, and the op Open Roads. But I probably won't talk about I'm any of them until the week after that. So there you go. I might try and see what the quarry is like via cloud because mm. as Dusk Falls was really good with touch controls. Sure. So I wonder if the quarry has a similar touch control style arrangement for um, for the game if it's an interactive kind of starry game. Yeah, that's a good idea. Sean, I know you have not slept all day. Like it's 
too I don't know. It's late over there and you didn't get you didn't get you've been up for a while. So buddy, if you just want to outro us out, then I'm I'm totally good with that. Yeah, no, that's fine. We we haven't there's nothing lined up for the questions in part of chat. Um and we pretty much covered that, that Rex is with all the family stuff that we need to cover. Yeah. So um yeah, we've like we said, we've got it's spring break for for Nick and his kiddos uh, this by the end of this week, and it's the Easter break. We call it our Easter half mm. term in the UK. Uh, for mine, they got two weeks off. Uh, we're going to go see the new Ghostbusters film at the weekend to kind of kick the the Easter break, um, and then it's hopefully just a lot of relaxing because we're tired. <laughs> yeah, I'm with you, man. So. Yeah. So um, anyway, yeah. If you want to get in touch with me, you want to ask me any questions about the stuff that I've been playing, you can do. That's Sean Double underscore Abbott on X. If you want to get in touch with Nick, you can do that. Uh, he is at Nick Ten D O H Nick Tendo uh, on X. We we do we do answer back when people that is. Um, we're always there to ask questions, and if not, and you want to ask something that maybe we you don't think we can handle, or if you just want to shout out to our show and stuff like, that, you can do it at GPT Gaming News. And that'll get you to the, the Game Pass Tracker Show's X page. Um, if you want to shoot us an email asking us any questions or you've got a question for next week in the show, you can send one to show at gamepasstracker.com. Um, I think so far we've only had Bruce that's emailed us a question. So if you want to join Bruce up there in the Hall of Fame, you can do by emailing us a question. Uh, thanks very much, everybody, for listening. And thanks for all you guys that are listening via the audio podcast. And until next time, we shall see you later. See you later, guys.